The ocean has long been a source for cautionary tales in horror fiction, and rightly so, really. Our civilization has risen and fallen on the might and mysteries of the endless ocean, entire cities engulfed by the encroaching tide, entire empires forged on the passage of the seven seas. Where bounty lies, so does danger, and grisly, salty sailors throughout history have only served to perpetuate the grim tales of misfortune that are so synonymous with the sea. Well, you drank up part one of this series, but hold your nose, because here comes the cold water. We've got a part two. And yes, that was an Eminem reference. And no, I'm not ashamed. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube, top five scary videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today, we curiously take a look at the top five creepiest ghost ships that haunt the sea. Part two, roll the clip. Sir. Fix our position with care, Mr. Reed. I want to know exactly where we are in relation to King William Land. Yes, sir. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from season one of AMC's grossly underrated horror anthology series, The Terror, and yeah, I've harped on about it long enough, but give it a watch, you will not be disappointed. If you're a fan of this list already, then The Terror will smash those expectations right out of the water, literally. Anyway, we better get on. Ghost ships. Kicking off at number five, the SS Beichimo. Now, although many tales of ghost ships and their legend are mired in murky mystery and spotty historical records, this one is perhaps one of the most well documented cases of a ghost ship in nautical history. Built in Sweden in the year 1914, the SS Beichimo was used as a trading vessel for routes between Hamburg and Sweden in and throughout the First World War. After the war, though, it was shipped over to Canada, where it was employed by the Hudson's Bay Company, carrying cargo throughout the Arctic region. There, on October 1st, 1931, during a routine voyage, a devastating storm blew in, and the Beichima was trapped in pack ice just off the coast of Alaska. The crew quickly abandoned ship, travelling over the ice to the nearest town of Barrow, Alaska, where they took shelter. Several days later, after the storm had subsided, the crew returned to retrieve their precious cargo, only to find that the SS Beichima had disappeared. Her captain decided that she must have broken up during the storm and sunk, but a few days later, an Inuit seal hunter told the captain that he had spotted the Beishimo nearly 50 miles away from their initial position. As the story goes, the Beishimo didn't sink at all, and for several decades after her abandonment, she sailed the Arctic coast completely unmanned. In fact, the SS Beishimo was seen on numerous occasions throughout the following century, and several crews even managed to board her. In fact, the last recorded sighting was by a group of Inuit in 1969, a staggering 38 years after she was abandoned. Her ultimate fate? No one knows but it's safe to say that somewhere out there in the frozen north, the SS Beishimo is still sailing. Next up at number four, the Jenny. Now, this one is a little bit murkier, to say the least, and historical accounts have varied from person to person. One thing always remains the same, though. If the accounts are true, then this nautical tale is perhaps one of the most bleakest and most despairing cases of a crew being lost at sea. As the story goes, the Jenny, an English schooner that set sail from its home port of the Isle of Wight in 1822, became frozen in an ice barrier just off the Drake Passage sometime in its voyage in 1823. Nearly a decade later, Later, in 1840, the stark remains of the ship had been dislodged by the ice, only to be discovered by a nearby whaling ship. As some accounts tell, when the crew first saw the ship, they saw seven figures standing to attention on the main deck, and so thought that the vessel was manned. As they got closer, though, they discovered the grim truth. The seven figures standing to attention were, in fact, frozen in place, turned to ice by the Arctic cold. Things only got worse from there, though, and as the crew of the whaling ship explored the vessel, they found more and more bodies frozen in time deeper below the deck. As some reports go, as the crew came to the captain's cabin, they found him frozen in place with a pen in his hand. The final note written in his log read May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. Yeah, spooky stuff. Coming in at number three, the SS Valencia. Now, this one's a little bit more interesting, to say the least, because it's a verified fact that the wreckage of the SS Valencia can still be seen to this day, scattered along the beach and rocky shoreline of Vancouver Island's West Coast Trail. After the ship struck a reef during a storm in 1906, the wreckage of the SS Valencia was considered to be the worst maritime disaster along the western North American coast, otherwise known as the Graveyard of the Pacific. The Valencia was a small ship, a passenger steamer that had a long history of carrying both passengers, cargo, and troops. But at the time of her ruin, she was operating as a tour boat, often running routes from San Francisco and up to Seattle. During the wreckage, tragically, 136 souls were lost, with rescue efforts unable to access the Valencia in the ravaging storm. But 
our ghostly tale lies with those that tried to escape. You see, as the legend goes, in panic, the crew launched all of the Valencia's lifeboats, going against the captain's orders, all of which went horribly wrong. Three flipped on descent, dozens more capsized after reaching the water, and the last one disappeared out into the waves. Since the disaster of the SS Valencia, countless sailors and fishermen have reported sightings of these lifeboats listlessly floating upon the water during particularly calm days at sea. As some of the tales go, these lifeboats are still filled with the skeletal remains of the lost souls of the SS Valencia. Next up, at number two, the Copenhagen. And it's quite the title really, because the Copenhagen is considered by most to be one of the greatest maritime mysteries of the modern era, with only whispers, rumours and speculation as to its ultimate fate. Built for the Danish East Asiatic Trading Company in 1921, it was the world's largest sailing ship at the time, and primarily served as a sail training vessel for young cadets. In the eyes of many, it was the most impressive sailing ship ever built. However, as the story goes, on September 21st, 1928, the Copenhagen departed from northern Jutland for Buenos Aires on its 10th and ultimately final voyage. A total of 75 people were aboard and the journey was planned to span all the way to Melbourne, Australia and then back to Europe. But tragically, as we know, it was never seen again. The thing was though, the captain of the ship, Hans Andersen, was renowned for going long periods at sea without sending any messages. And so it wasn't until nearly six months later that the Danish company sent a search party. No wreckage or remains have ever been found. However, following the next several years of the Copenhagen's disappearance, there were a number of highly reputable sightings of a five-masted ship that fit perfectly its description. In July of 1930, the crew of an Argentine freighter sighted what they referred to as a phantom ship during a gale. Their captain noted in his records that this may be the wrath of the Copenhagen. Dozens of stories and tales have perpetuated around the ultimate fate of the Copenhagen, but the truth is we may never know. In all likelihood though, it's still out there, somewhere, floating on the endless tide. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the seabird. And this story is the literal definition of a ghost ship and one of the most saltiest sea yarns that I've heard spun in a while. Although this one has a few more twists and turns that you may not have first seen coming. As the legend goes, in the year 1750, a vessel named the Seabird was idling off the coast of Newport Harbour in Rhode Island and had quickly attracted quite a crowd on the shore due to its elaborate craftsmanship. Soon enough though, the crowd of onlookers noticed that there was something strange about the Seabird. There was no one manning the ship, not a soul in sight. As the legend goes, several moments later, the ship, as if by a supernatural wind, perfectly sailed itself through the rough breakers of the beach, gently landing on the nearby Easton's Beach. There, a few brave souls boarded the vessel, only to find the seabird completely deserted, save for a boiling kettle on the stove, and strangely enough, breakfast already prepared at the table. Now, some accounts state that a group of fishermen had passed the seabird a few hours before and had even spoken to the captain themselves. Where had the crew gone? What had happened in the few hours that had passed since their last sighting? The truth of it is that no one may ever know, and such is the nature of ghostly tales from the sea. But, well, this is where things get a little stranger still, and take this final caveat with a pinch of sea salt. But as the legend goes, decades later, an old Taylor reported to a New England journalist his deepest, darkest secret. In a fit of rage, he had murdered his entire crew just before making port, throwing their bodies into the ocean. And the name of that ship? Well, the Seabird, of course. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our list for the top five creepiest ghost ships that haunt the sea part two. What do you guys think? Any more to add to this sunken sea chest of ghostly goings on? Let us know your thoughts as well as any choice picks down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. Simbad the Pirate says, I served 22 years in the Navy and I swear to you I have seen ghost ships. They would appear and vanish, show up on radar. We even sent boats and helicopters to investigate some of them. We found one with no one on board, not a single soul, completely full of cars cargo and no one on board. There is some scary junk at sea, not to mention the entire fog factor, and it gets spooky at night on a ship. Really spooky. Well, there we have it, guys. Need I say more? A full-on original ghost ship tale. Thank you very, very much for sharing Sinbad the Pirate, and after that, I guess I'll see myself out. On that note, horror fans, just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. Until next time, you take it easy.